You see it now? Yep. It's up on Facebook now. Okay, so without any further ado, we're going to get started. Welcome everybody that's in Facebook. And again, thank you all who have joined in the Zoom. Uh, it is so, so important that we open this up by turning this over to our dear Queen Sister. And I, Mama Tendai. Oh, go ahead, Bob. Most you want to introduce her, you can go ahead. <laughs> I wasn't tongue tied. I was our thinking, great queen. I was, our was, great was, sister <laughs> queen. Yes, that's what Mama I'm saying. Tendai. I was thinking of some other Dr. Mama Tendai Johnson. Okay, great. With, Mama uh, Tendai. Yes, our spiritual leader at this moment. <laughs> All right, brothers and sisters. One second here. Hold that, Mama Tendai. Um, as we begin, I just want to say that I was just going to do a, a plain altar. And as I began to put this little piece together here for us to share today, Brother James wasn't having it. And he wanted his red, black, and green. So we are here to celebrate the continuation and, the, and to assist our brother in the process of his ascension. And so we're going to pour libation first, but I also want to share with you all that of course, since Brother James was one of our members of the UNIA, I contacted our family in Nigeria. So they did ascension for him this morning. Uh, there were certain things that he had asked for, which is what I have here on the altar. And I'll explain that when we finish. Uh, in terms of, of what these various symbolic it, uh, instruments or items are that are here on this altar. But to help us begin, I will pour libation. And this libation that I am pouring, I am using the liquor that is set aside specifically for our ancestors. We normally pour, and as I, you saw that I contacted the instrument three times, the number three is a sacred number. It represents Eshu, but it represents the opening, the beginning. And as we are celebrating the ascension of our brother and helping to him to ascend on, we are celebrating the beginning of his new life, his new experience as a spiritual entity. So I will say, and I will pour somewhat in Yoruba and the rest in English because we need to participate. And when I ask you, I'm going to ask you to call upon uh, your own ancestors, our collective ancestors, our international and national ancestors, because we claim all of them and we need their spiritual energy to support us in the endeavors and the work that we have to do here on this earth and on this plane of consciousness with all of the things that we have to confront as a people of African descent anywhere here in this world at this time, um, we must be prepared. We must be in position where we can be as strong as possible because we're being bombarded on every side with everything negative that could possibly be. And so, we call upon our ancestors this time, as I had said with the three times, I pay homage to Mother Earth and Father Sky. So I would say, Mojuba Ye, Mojuba Arun, Ome Titi, Ine Titi, Ona Titi, Titi Ashu, Titi Ogun, Titi Obatala, Titi Shango, Titi Yamaja, Titi Oya, Titi Oshun, Titi Ogrumala, Titi Orisha, Mojuba Olorun, Mojuba Loki, Mojuba Olodu Mare, Mojuba Ibaye, Wombobo Egum Ibaye, Mojuba Baba Larisha, Eo Larisha, Mojuba, Mojuba Bobo Eku, and Belay Fiola Gumare Ibaye Orun, Kinkamashe, Asheda, Ashe, Kinkamashe, Akoda, Ashe, Kinkamashe, Baba Lao, Ade Duan Loes and Dia, Ashe, Kinkamashe, Baba Pakunle, or Yasanya. Ashe, Kikamashe, Ilavisha Oloshun, 
Doyen Fanin Ashe. King of Ashe, now we begin to call members who you want to be alive. So you can call your ancestors. King of Ashe, Paul Bassett Ashe. King of Ashe, each of you, I want you to join in. I can't Allie, hear you. Allie and Carl. Ashe. Albert Payne. Ashe. Betty Murphy. Ashe. Jacqueline Frank Murphy. Robertson. Ashe. Betty Williams. Ashe. Haywood Murphy. Sissy Lynch. Ashe. Alice Ella Palmer. Turner. Ashe. Sarah Parker. Ashe. Nellie Vincent Robertson. Lynch. Ashe. James Vincent Lynch. Ashe. James Palmer. Ashe. We call our collective ancestors, those who we have claimed, like Brother Renoki Chat Rashidi, like Adam with his Van Sertima. Okay. Like Sister. Thomas W. Harvey. Ashe. Ivan Van Sertima. Ashe. Charles L. James. Ashe. I'm a Francis Harvey. Chris Wilson. Messiah Garvey. Ashe. I'm a Nifu Harvey. Ashe. Gene Slappy. Big Gunter Jill. Ashe. Farouk Muhammad. Ashe. Sister Marcus Isaac. Garvey. Ashe. Kamal Robinson. Ashe. Dr. Francis Chris Wilson. Ashe. We call them all of Mac. ancestors. All of those who are near, those who have been with us for who have recently departed, who are now in the spirit world. We call upon all of those who have been our ancestors for many, many years. For those who are about to return, we call upon our ancestors who have gone to the ancestor realm. We call upon the ancestors who are about to return to this realm. We say, Kosi Ifu, Kosi Ron, Kosi Ifo, Kosi Kikiza, Kosi Adina, Kosi Ekab, Kosi Ayo, Kosi Ike, Kosi Ayodun, Kosi Bahala Hala. Ariku Babawa, Ariku Mama. I translate for you in English, and I have called upon the divine forces of the universe, beginning with Oladumare, Mother, Father, God, the creator of all that is holy, the giver of life, the maker of human beings, and all of the universe and everything that we know. I made homage to the forces of earth and sky because they represent male and female. We have to have the combination of the two for life to continue. I say. I've called upon those energies that compose what is necessary for life to exist in the universe. So East Yavar Arisha, who represents part of nature, and each of the Arisha whose names I call that also represent the concepts that we have to have in I order to exist, like the concept of good and the concept of the opposite of good, like the concept of justice and righteousness and truth and reciprocity. I say. The Orisha represents. And then I have called upon those who were as old as we know, the first priests of Ifa, Asheda and Akoda. I say. And I have prayed upon, have called upon my own spiritual family in Nigeria. I, say. I have asked each of you to call upon your family members to join us in this celebration of ascension for our brother. I say. At the end, I have said, let us not see anything that is negative. The Yoruba believe there is no such thing as a devil, but there is an opposite for everything that is good because we live in a world made up of opposites. And so I have said, let us not see death. Let us not see um illness. Let us not see not having any money. Let us not see <laughs> unemployment. Let us not see anything that is negative and that will help us to be able to be uplifted. And I close by saying, let us not see death our mother. Let us not see death our father. I say. Complete this ascension ceremony with all the support of our nation. And so I say. I say. I say. I say. I say yo. Now, as I can as I go on, you all know Oshini, I have to call Oshini to be with us. The mother of the universe. Some call her Aset. Some call her Isis. Some call her Amesi. But she is all one, the divine mother who has birthed all human beings. So I say, Ore Ore 
Mama, I ask for your divine presence to come and preside and to assist us. Give your motherly love to us all. Help us and put your arms around us and love us. Continue to love us when we don't even love ourselves. Continue, Mama, to assist us to unfold and understand who we are. Assist us, Mother, to reclaim all of those things that belong to us that we have lost and that we no longer understand if that is of value. Mama, we pray for your divine guidance, for your benefit, for your upliftment, for your help. We ask that all of those Arisha who have come to you to assist with the divine guidance and upliftment of humanity and who made it possible for the creation of the universe. We honor you, Mama, and we lift you up, Ashe. I want to just say for our brother James, dearest brother, we call upon the, your spirit. We invoke you, we assist you, we lift you up at this time. I lift you up. I lift you up. I lift you up. I provide for you that you might be able to ascend into the heavens and take your rightful place among our ancestors that you will be put in a place of honor that you might be able to assist us as you go forward. We pray for you, brother. We have provided for you all the things that you need for your travels. Salt, so that you will be able to enjoy the process and understand the essence of the travel that you have made. We provide palm oil so that your trip will be made smooth, that there will be no problems and no hiccups. We provide for you honey, so that your journey to the land of the ancestors is one that is sweet. And we give you bitter cola so that you will have the strength that is necessary to make the journey. We need water to cool the energies and to calm the energies and make things easy for you to be able to cross over, as we would have said in the Christian faith, cross over the River Jordan, where the ancestors will be waiting for you on the other side. And as I had indicated to you, family, I had asked the family in Nigeria to uh, make their prayers for our dearest brother and to also make sure that uh, the energies that we need for his ascension would be provided for his upliftment. So the ascension ceremony was done for him in Nigeria this morning. One of the things that he asked for was what I have provided here, which is corn and milk, corn milk and corn. So the Ascension Ceremony in Nigeria, they provided the corn that he asked for and the moi moi, which is a staple and an ancestral food. Why did he ask for this? Because he wants to feast the people, the ancestors who are coming to meet him. And that was his request. And so we honor his request as we lift him up. We thank you for the opportunity we thank you for allowing us to be in your life, dear Brother James. We thank you for all the work that you have done here on this plane of consciousness and all that you have given to the UNI, A, to our cause and to our people. You have truly been a blessing to us all. We appreciate everything that you have done. And in our appreciation, we lend you our energy to lift you up. May you ascend, my dear brother. Finally, I have provided what is here this light and it will be placed in the highest position in my house because this is to light his way to the ancestors and he can see in the darkness, he can see wherever he is to be able to find his way to the ancestors who are awaiting him. And of course, we have the incense which is to also like the water to clear the airy air and to provide a wholesome environment for his transition. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Mm. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama, today for-, for I say, I say, I say, oh. Yes, yes, yes. So before I bring on the next presenter, which is gonna be the president of Division 330, Baba Mosi, I'm gonna share a few things with you all and uh, I'll come back later. But uh, 
there, James was loved by so many people and James gave so much love to so many people. And believe me, he knew a lot of people. I know because <laughs> me and him used to go to bat about different people he knew. And uh, I, he was telling me certain people, I said, well, introduce me to him, <laughs> you know, because, and, and he would when he could. Uh, James was that way. James was always about bringing people together. On uh, September the 10th, a homegoing celebration was held for him up in uh, Silver Spring. And I do want to announce that because also the uh, major homegoing service, which was held uh, uh, at uh, the church, uh, St. Augustine Catholic Church, which James was involved with for many, many years in his life, was held on September the 15th. Both of those homegoing services were, were great, attended, well attended. The first one was held in the backyard. And I uh, got to meet a lot of brothers that I knew, because I knew James for a long time. We, we, we go all the way back from when he first came to the, the DC area. Uh, but I got to meet a lot of his frat brothers, with Tony Browder being one of them that I knew and others, and a lot was shared there. Uh, so I won't share too much more until later, prior to our president general and other people in between. I wanna bring on right now a brother who uh, worked closely with James in the UNIA ACL, Woodson Banneker, Jackson Bay Division 330. Uh, my brother, our brother, our leader, who's also a parent body member, by the way, he's not just a local leader, he's an international leader, Baba Mosi Massimilla. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, greetings, everyone. Uh, first, uh, my respects to you, President General, Judy and Kuhn, and all other members of the parent body, and to the members of Division 330, and of course, to all those who are now on the Zoom, and as well as those uh, on uh, Facebook. So, we, today we're here uh, giving our respects to our brother James on this uh, 40th day, 40th day uh, of his passing. And I'll have to say just a few words in respect to this person that I met. You know, we, we, I have not long known him for a very long time, except for as a, as a member of the Division 330. But uh, what I do know and can tell you is that uh, in the period that uh, he's been with us, let's say during the last couple of years, um, when uh, some, some turmoil uh, caused us to engage in the manner of rehabilitating the UNIA ACL. And um, he has shown loyalty, loyalty to the UNIA ACL and to the purpose of our rehabilitating the UNIA ACL. He's been a, a brother who, when you say loyal, I, I mean that in the sense that he was there, I, he showed you know, no stepping back, no side stepping. He was moving forward with us all the time. And he gave us all his love and respect. And we had no other reason but to give him the same. Now, I'll speak on him being the treasurer of the UNIACL Division 330. He took up that position um, and he showed integrity to the highest point. I say this because uh, he displayed uh, the kind of honesty and uh, strong moral principles that is necessary for anyone taking up that position as a treasurer of an organization. He was quite straightforward. And uh, when, I, when I talk about integrity and strong moral principles, it's what he called for in the sense of, us, uh, <laughs> of the responsibilities he's had and the responsibility he expected us 
to have when it came to dealing with members of the division and the UNIA as a whole. You know, he um, he called for a paper trail. And I say, and I, no matter how many times I tell, well, you know, everything is going electronic and so on. You know, he says, well, I don't see any signatures on the electronic. So he wants stuff with signatures. He wants to make sure that uh, anything that's paid out has a signature on a check. Uh, he wants to make sure that when he goes to the bank and does any business, he has no issues with the account. So, and speaking of account, I'll say that what he called for was uh, the highest level of, of accountability. Now, we met several times in trying to put a lot of things together so that we could have that, that, that path. We could have that, we can, we can show to our members that we're doing the work diligently and we are honest in our purpose. He, he came to my home from where he is, and that, that's, I mean, he will take his time and drive over to my home so we can sit down and discuss the issues we may have. And I liked working with, with him for that reason because he didn't have to do that. But um, oh, he showed that sense of purpose. And I respect him for that. I've always respected him. I'm going to miss him for that reason too. And I'm hoping that the next person who comes into the division and who takes up the position of treasurer, I can with purpose sit down and discuss in the same way, the same manner, and with the same expectations that, uh, that level of integrity that James showed. I'll miss you, James. And uh, I, my regards to his family, because he, of course, um, showed a lot of respect to my family. And I will, I, I'm doing the same to his family as well. And I thank you. That's it, my brother. And thank you so much, Baba Mosi. And uh, thank everybody for coming in with us. Uh, I want to get off of the East Coast for a minute and uh, hope my sister's ready. Uh, and I hope I pronounce your name right, uh, Arisha. I know you knew Brother James for some time and I believe you are on the West Coast. Uh, James spent a lot of time all over the place. Uh, but if you would please share your reflections, if you would, uh, or what you would like to put in this particular Zoom in regards to your uh, serious relationship and long-time relationship with Brother James? Um, yes. I met James in 1969 when I was 17 years old. And I was at New Mexico State University. I took my um, friends to visit my parents who were um, at Holloman Air Force Base. I took about four young men with me and James was one of them. And my father said to them, you know, my daughter is really young. She's only 17. So if y'all could look out for her, I would really appreciate it. And so James, along with uh, a few other, decided to be my protectors. And James was my protector my whole life. In fact, he even, he even apologized to me last year that he couldn't protect me more. I said, James, how could you do that? You live in DC. He said, I know, but I, I really want to be there for you. And I told James he was always for, there for me. James was um, somebody that I could share my magical stories with. Like I'm an outdoor educator and I would always send James pictures of the things that I did. I, I'm a kayaker, a snorkeler, I do ocean canoeing and I do high ropes courses. And so James insisted that I always send him pictures of where I was. So he said he could live vicariously through me. And he did, he told me actually 
not long ago that he had every single picture that I've ever sent him while I was working. So somewhere in his files, there's a lot of pictures, more pictures of me working than I have of myself. Most of the stories about James, I can't even share because <laughs> we, we did some wild things and, um, you know, it's, I just couldn't even possibly share. But if you catch me on Saturday and pull me aside, I can tell you some of those stories because I'm coming to that celebration on Saturday. I, I really miss James and it's really hard for me to connect with him not it's being really here. So I'm still working on that. My parents really love James. And every time that I came to the city in DC, James always was the one to pick me up, always stayed at James's house. And um, the last time that I physically saw James was when he took me to my mother's funeral. And um, she's buried in Arlington with my father. And I was at his house, I came early so we could know run around uh, DC and he can in introduce me to all his friends and I was really sick and James literally picked me up and carried me to the hospital and um then came in and was there with me for all of my most important events James has been there for me and he was somebody that I shared a lot of magical stories with like you know, you can't tell everybody your stories, but James was somebody that I could always tell those stories to that I couldn't tell anybody else. So I'm really going to miss that. And um, thank you for so much for asking me to speak about James. Um, and I, I really will miss him. And so will the rest of my family. And I wish him well. And uh, I love you, James. And yeah, thank you thank so you. much, my sister. And you know, uh, well, you know, we've met, but James yes. often spoke a lot about not only you. He, James, James made sure that if you did not know somebody that he knew, he would get you acquainted with them, even if you had not made them, met them face to face. That's a, another thing I loved about James, is yeah. that he was bringing people together that had never even physically come together. And then when we came together, we sort of already had, had an idea of each other. So, but, but, but. Uh, Please, by all means, uh, continue to communicate with James because James will continue to communicate with us. I'm certain. I'm certain of that. Uh, James was a communicator. Sometimes, you know, James would say things so much you would want to say, when, when are you going to stop? Because because James had a way of communicating <laughs> where he wouldn't talk as fast as I talk, but he would say as much as I say. So that means you would be talking as long as I'll be talking. And so we got together, but James was definitely a... Uh, uh, a family kind of a brother that you you love and we're going to continue to love him up and I know he's going to work his mojo my sister as much as we miss him here with us physically and believe me we really miss him uh we really yes. miss him. James used to come to my house almost every other day uh for something because my wife uh Kathy uh is actually his, super, his supervisor for him doing the great works that he's did with his mom James would, yeah. would James would bring his mother to events that I would have. We actually had her 102 birthday party in my yard. But James would take his mother to different events and he was so loving on her. Uh, I was actually uh, blessed to be a care provider for not quite a whole year, but for some time in helping out. Uh, and uh, Mama Corley is just a jewel. And James, yeah. James made sure that not only did he uh, provide for her, he made sure everybody that came in contact with her provided for her because, and, and Mama Corley at 102 is still very coherent, still communicate with you and let you know things. And so we really uh, are continuing to have care providers that can fill in for him. Uh, uh, and that's, that's not an easy task because James is right there with her 24 uh, seven. And in fact, his shift, when he decided to ascend us, he was getting ready to go into his shift and the care provider but prior to him is who found him. So at any point, uh, I'm going to move now. Rastafari Roots, Jimmy Hyman.
Oh, Jimmy. Okay. Yeah, I just got plugged okay. in. J Jimmy, oh. Jimmy, I see Maxine. I didn't see your yeah, name. Yeah, that's my, my wife. Yeah, no, I'm but already Jimmy, here. Jimmy, Jimmy, please share with us now uh, 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 some some remarks because I know how close you were with James. Go ahead, my brother uh, Jimmy. Uh, my brethren, um, I have a poem here that I race is going to read. It's going to be that Saturday, but I'm not a poem. I have a whole letter I wrote, but I'm going to just go kind of cause this. Um, some I may repeat that's back into the letter. But you know, um, James Wilson, start off, my name is Jimmy Ronald Williams. He's James Roy Wilson. So we had the JRW thing going. Can you hear me, Irisha? Yes, sir, we hear you, bro. Yeah, he had, we had that going. And then we had also Ronald William James. He, hold, on, hold on, let me close this door because I'm getting my bathroom remodel. Hold on. Well, no, he, so we, so in other words, we had the JRW thing going. Ron Paul James was Ronald Williams James. I was Jimmy Ronald Williams, and he was James Roy Wilson. So we went ahead and we we had so much going on as far as meeting each other in 1969 down in the desert in Las Cruces. I've been knowing him for 53 years. And I would we would talk at least once every two weeks. You know, and it was such a joy to have. Uh, I mean, so it, it, my, my story is going to tell about it in uh it's, it's, it's such a joy just to really write something about that brother. He was my best friend in life, you know, so it was just such a joy and he connected there. So I'm going to start off by reading the, the letter that I wrote to him. Okay, it starts off like it's called The Circle Becomes a Dot. Homegoing celebration for James Roy Wilson. As the world becomes larger, your circle of friends gets smaller. The circle becomes a dot. We have all lost a great friend, husband, father, smooth dancer, and all around Mr. Ambassador. James Roy Wilson, affectionately known as JW, was a member of many organizations, yet he stood alone. Some would say that he crossed personal boundaries, like we all kind of did back in them college days, uh, personal boundaries. Uh, however, his presence had his own borders. He loved to go to 10 places in one hour, and I would be right there with him. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> We've known one another for more than 53 years. We met in college, New Mexico State University. I was on a football scholarship. In 1969, our school established the first Black Student Union, and Jane was a protest spokesperson who lived the revolutionary life of the 1960s. Our university holy huddle still exists today, including the following. Craig Webb, Willie T.C. Smith, Ron Poe James, Larry and Dee Dee Moore, Iracia Pearl Gwynn, Mark Horn, Fat Jack, Hardy Murphy, and Dr. Moody Jackson. What keeps me going is that I often celebrate and reflect, smile, and sometimes cry about James' life in the sunshine. The commitment he always showed connecting three generations, um, my wife, Maxine, and bonus daughter, Kim, my 104-year-old mother, Helen B. Williams, sister Sally, brothers Hardy and Donald have all experienced his kindness. J.W. was connected with many musical groups, artists, cultural icons, and African scholars across the world. We both learned how to ski while working with the Taj Mahal Steamboat Springs Aspen, Colorado tour with Craig Webb. Also working with Eddie Kendricks, the Young Senators, Omdi Poet, and the Watts Prophets tour in Washington, D.C., Baltimore area. Collaborating with Donald Byrd and the Blackbirds recording sessions at the record plant in Hollywood, we were rocking it in the 70s. James also assisted me in producing the 1982 UCLA Culture Reggae Festival. And in 1992, uh, he was with me when we attended the Youth Ball Concert with Steel Pulse, President Clinton's inauguration. Attended the 2007 T-Ball game on the South Lawn of the White House for Jackie Robinson's 60th year in Major League Baseball. His wife, Sherry, I also attended my retirement and uh, celebration in Los Angeles with Iracia also. One of the last acts of kindness was to chaperone my wife, Maxine, myself and her first cousin, Gwen, and her friend on her 70th birthday to the African American Museum in Washington, DC. Let's continue to pray for James' mother, Miss Gladys, his wife, Sherry, brother, Seti, and other family members, including Sana, Aya, Amaz, Thorne, and Dory. James, you will always be my best friend in life. Ja Guidance, Jimmy Ronald Williams, AKA known, AKA known as Ross Jimmy Hyman. Peace and love, peace and love. 
So that's that's what I had to say about that, brother. And I had to write it down. Brother Jimmy, I really appreciate you, bro. Yeah, man. And, and Rachel and told me this was the today uh, that it was going to be a stream, and I had to go get some supplies at Home Depot. I said, let me rush back and get on, get it on. So, so, so it would be good to see you both. Unfortunately, I'll be in North Carolina this Saturday, but certainly you all, you know, you're always welcome in Banneker City. True, true. Baba, Baba Mosi and Brother Zama and quite a few of us will probably be there at Thurgood Marshall. Uh, I've yeah. known of you both for a long time. You know, I go back, yes. with, I go back with James, <laughs> back to junior high school a little before <laughs> you all. But believe me, like I said, Jimmy, Yes, James would make sure that if we did not know each other, he would he would be the, the, the he would be the bridge to make us know each other. Bridge, right. <laughs> when, 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 they, when I did a workshop in the Virgin Islands with yeah. the AFT with Jawanzik and Jufu, yeah. I was at the uh, Saint Saint Thomas Saint John, and then I went to Saint Croix and, and had to hook up with Banjo and stayed at Banjo's house. Yes, and you know where I'm talking about. Yes, I do. Yes. He would and hook you, it all up. You know, bro, it's so it's so important because, and I'm so glad both of you all joined us because, yes. you know, uh, James James is known like all over all over the place. Yes, he but, is. But his works in the UNIA and and his works even with even with my friendship with him, like I said, he made sure that I knew all of the various key people <laughs> in his life, and he loved you all dearly, and still yes. does. Yes. So I want to make I want to make that clear. Even though we can't hug our brother physically, we can put him on our altar and talk to him yes, and vibe yes, with him exactly. all the time because he is free. He is not. He's not no longer caught in this physical reality that we are. True, true, true. He's free, and you know, as much as I miss him. Uh, you know, because I, I I think about him all the time because, like I said, James would knock on my door. James is one of the only people that I allowed to knock on my door without calling me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not talking about uh, just a friendly visit. I'm talking about all the time. All the time, he right? On your door. James is like that, and you know, he 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 knew he was loved. He would tell us all the time how much he loved us, and yeah. that's one thing I always appreciated because sometimes we forget to say those things to each other. But me and him as brothers, he always would like, no matter how much we might fuss and argue, because we did. Yeah, yeah. Like all brothers and brothers and sisters do. But he would always at the end, whether he's mad with me or not, he'd say, I love you. <laughs> and and, and, and that, that made me feel so good because mm. then I gotta say, yeah, I love you too, bro. <laughs> I said, so he kept us on, he kept us on in balance. And that's one great thing about him. And uh I want to move to to uh back to the DC area to uh my dear Dr. Tilly Williams. Uh, I met Tilly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Yeah. Tilly, would you share with us, Dr. Williams, uh, whatever? And, and I know, I hope you're going to be in town this weekend, but I, I, will, I will be in town this weekend, and I do plan to be <laughs> at the celebration this weekend. And I'm glad to hear because I always hear about my partner, Heim. <laughs> all the time, you know. Right. That's, that's, that's it, my partner. <laughs> And I'm so glad to see Aresha and I will, I look forward to seeing, you know, if you're both going to be here this week, I look forward to seeing you both um, this weekend. Okay. So blessings to you and safe travels to you. Blessings, blessings. Yes. Oh my goodness. Mm, James, you know, um, Baba Singor, when you were saying something about, um, you know, about James in terms of um, his talking, um, I could ask him a question or I didn't have to ask him a question. He started talking about something. And it's like, James, what are you talking about? You know, because he wasn't, it, to me, he wasn't to the point. It's like, that's not what I asked you. Tilly, will you just wait? Will you just wait? Will you be patient? And just that's listen him, that's to, him. And just listen to what I'm saying? And he would get to it. You know, it may take about 10 minutes or so, but, <laughs> <laughs> but he'd get around to it. Yes, See, by that time right. for me, if I were talking, and it took me that long, and I told all these side stories that go with, you know, whatever the answer was. I would have forgotten what I was going to be saying. Say, right, he come back. <laughs> so um, uh, it was my honor and pleasure to know James. I met James in 2004 when I um, I had moved back to D.C. a year before, and I met him at a party, and I met him um, at a hand dance party. So it was like we did we hand dance and then we became hand dance partners from yeah. then on out. I mean, he was my buddy. He was surely my buddy. And James, 
was really the best friend that a person could have. Yes, he was. You know, he was frustrating, exasperating. <laughs> um, you know, all those things. Like James, wait a minute. Now, what? Why did you do it that way? You know, my brother, <laughs> my my brother, my um my birth brother. Um, they used to James, and he used to come over and help me move things. And the last thing we we did um, together was they were moving a bookcase for me. And James and I were just going at, well, why'd you do it that way? It's going, you know, it's, you know, and my brother goes, look, you all can argue later. Um, <laughs> this bookcase is heavy. So <laughs> let's get, let's get going with it. And, and the thing is, we would have arguments all the time, but, you know, at the end, you know, I love him. He loved me. And we said yeah. that nothing, there was no residual in terms of bad feelings or hard feelings or anything like that. Never got stuck. <laughs> yeah, I, I I miss James. I talked to him. I used to talk to him, at, you know, at least three days a week, sometimes more than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, not about anything in particular, just, you know, just like, hmm, let me call James. I haven't talked to him. You know, <laughs> let me see what he's doing. And, um, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't know all to say uh, about him. I, I will... I will miss him. I loved his spirit. I loved his laughter. Um, I loved his generosity. I told a story about, you know, when I was at the service on the 15th, how, you know, we were just on the phone and I'm telling him, you know, James, I just got a taste for some yellow cake with chocolate icing. You know, I mean, just in passing. Yeah. An hour later, he comes to my condo. Yeah. And, you know, he's downstairs. It's like, girl, come on down here and get this yellow cake with chocolate icing so I can go get um, Damiana signed out uh, for who, who was taking care of his mother. Yes, yes. You know, it's like, I didn't ask him to do that, but he did that. And he was yes. so thoughtful about those kinds of things. And um, I, you know, I'm still trying to wrap my, my arms around yes. him not being here. I get mad at him some days, you know, since this has happened. It's like, why aren't you here? You know, I need to talk to you. Yeah. And sometimes yes. he speaks to me. Sometimes he talks to me. Yeah. Hi, Aisha. Um, sometimes he speaks to me. And um, it's, it's like, I miss him. So it's going to yes. be, it's going to be really hard. You know, it is hard now, but yeah. it'll get easier because I know he's watching over all of us. Yeah. And um, we all love him. And he knew that. Yeah, he knew that. And we gave, we, you know, the last, I won't say the last, I talked to him before I went, you know, I, I had a trip to Seattle and, you know, he wasn't talking about anything in particular and, but he never told me that he felt any kind of way like sick, except that he was tired and sleepy yeah. all the time. Yeah, exactly. And so I said, James, just get some rest, take a nap when you can. So you always got a habit of calling me just when I'm about to take a nap. I said, well, go to sleep. Don't answer the phone. You know, <laughs> so anyway, we were more like brothers and sisters just in terms of our relationship. And, um, you know, but and the love that we shared yeah. with each other. So, yeah, Billy, I remember when my um, uh, sister came and stayed with Gussie for the um, Obama uh, inauguration. You you were selling your house or uh, yeah. something. He wanted. He said, "Well, you can rent uh, uh, Tilly's house." You know, then, then he was like, <laughs> he was like this. And I got a friend named Gussie, and then he stayed over there at Gussie's house. And then, how, how is your niece doing? Your, oh, your, she's great. She's yeah. Expected, I remember I met you, your baby. Niece. See, we know about what's going on in each other's lives. Right, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, yes, yes, so, so Tilly, yes. Tilly, I'm so glad you mentioned what you just did because you actually brought tears to my eyes because the Nubian Leadership, Han Nubian Leadership Hand Dance Association was, was so important. James is one of the major people along with myself and Baba Farouk and Imani, the brothers, and you know, it was always more women that came to the dance. Mm -hmm. James was one of the first, along with me and Farouk, we would dance with two sisters at a time. Yes, James, yes, James yes. So I know he's gonna step off uh, off in the in, in the atmosphere because he's definitely loved to dance. He got rug. He got rug. Tilly, you're absolutely right. You know, because you know you one of my favorite dance partners. And yeah. every time I would look up, James and you were dancing, you know, when me and Kathy were dancing, because that's just how it was. But James, James was definitely a dancer. He also was a board member of I Things to Collard Greens. So yes. you know, and, and, and was a, one of the major contributors to I Things to Collard Greens. James was in a lot of different things. But anyway, I'm gonna move on because like Tilly, you brought tears to my eyes because, like, you know, I know 
we're not going to be able to do a lot of physical hand dancing together, but spiritually, uh, I'll be dancing with him and with my other ancestors on my altar. I, you know, I got yes. tears running on my eyes because yes. That, yes. that's just how yeah, that's just how I switch partners, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's just how moving the, the energy is. And I know him yeah. and Farouk, him and Farouk are gonna be cutting up up there, man, on the dance floor. They're gonna dance with all the ancestors up there. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, let me move on to uh, one more thing. For, uh, since I heard that the brother, uh, what Lonnie Bradford passed a hand dancing brother. Yeah, smooth and easy. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, yeah. That was told to me. He, yeah, just, I, he just recently transitioned. They're gonna do a big special thing for Brad. Smooth yeah. And easy. But you know, one of the things that we did, we love smooth and easy and all the different people that taught dance, Priscilla. But you know, I'm I'm born and raised in DC, and J James grew up in DC, and we 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 formed the Nubian International Hand Dance Association to bring the culture into the dance. True. Because, because uh, you know, now everybody's dancing to all kinds, hand dancing to all kinds of music, African music, reggae yeah, music, yeah. you name it. But that's one of the things we did. And James is one of the founding members of the Nubian leadership, uh, uh, the Nubian uh, Hand Dance Association. But anyway, we're gonna move on because I know it's a lot of other people that wanna express, but I, I, I don't have anybody particular that I'm gonna call on, but raise your hand if you wanna share. I see that uh, we got Mama Jeanette Carson here. Mama Jeanette, are you able to uh, open your camera or are you on the phone? I uh, don't know how to operate this contraption. Go ahead, Mama <laughs> Jeanette, you are elder, you are elder, a uh, uh, sister uh, you, queen. You see my name. Yeah, go ahead, Mama Jeanette. <laughs> I said, you're lucky you can see my name. Say no, nothing saying, about saying something. What else? What else? Do you, ha do you I have don't know what to do with this cotton? No, but Mama, we hear you not, loud and clear, Mama Jeanette, and your voice. Oh. Everybody knows your voice. So if you want to share any reflections on Brother James, please do. Well, just that I did. I love James. He was very, just like what everybody has been saying, he was extremely friendly and helpful would reach out to help you at any time. He even came over and put a, a, a thing on my shower head. He said, <laughs> you need some help, you need some help. And he came over and, you know, just little things that he did. And he had a wonderful personality. I, I was just so shocked when I heard that he had gone to be an ancestor, but then really I'm gonna miss James very, very much. I really, really loved him very, very much. Yeah, so so did your daughter. You know, James and I both, you know, spent a lot of time vibing with with, with your daughter. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, for those that don't know, she was in a wheelchair and we're moving around, but she she's a busy bee and we hold her in the light now. Well, and she's she, not even in a wheelchair anymore. She's in right. a nursing home and right. completely handicapped now. Right. And I so, told her about James and she did shed some tears. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna right. hold continue to hold you, Mama Jeanette, and and her in the light uh, and, and, and love because uh, you all, you, you've been a long distance runner uh, for yeah, long many years. Like you all running. Yeah, I know mama, I know mama. <laughs> and, 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 and you know, you need to come over and get an aqua chi treatment so you can keep those those feet and the body rolling. I'm just, that's a side thing. We'll talk mama Jeanette. You know, no, that's mama, it's a good idea though. I, I, mama, I, I, well, you know, you know, you're always welcome to that mama Jeanette. You know, you my mother, you my moms, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, right. You know, you know how we roll. Uh, so now I want to move to Tayari. I see she's on, uh, 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 you know, for those that don't know, I think Tayari is uh, uh, Denny. Is that you Denny? Yeah, this is me. You want to share? Yes. I. Do, and then I'm, I'm going to um, leave because I have another call I have to get on. Okay. But I met James through you and Kathy. And my fondest memory that I'll remember is a couple of weeks before he transitioned, I was using Kathy's office and he came by that Sunday and because it had been COVID when we did see one another, we weren't able to greet each other the way we did. As everyone is saying, he was always so pleasant and loving and kind. And we both had masks on, I was working. And he said, I'll be so happy when we don't have to wear these masks anymore. And I said, yeah, me too. And so he said, we did a fist bump, an elbow bump. And he said, you think we can do a side hug? And I said, yeah, and we did a side hug. 
So when you and Kathy called to tell me that he had transitioned, that was the memory that I had of him. And all of you are talking about dancing. I'm a New Yorker. And a lot of times when I go out with you guys from DC, there's a different style. You guys do your DC dance. I was, I do a New York hustle and I've never met anybody from the area that could actually hustle with me. And I was out again with you and Kathy and he said, come on, let's do the hand dancing. And I said, James, I really don't, I don't think my step works like that. He said, what do you mean? I said, I hustle. He said, oh girl, I'm a hustler. I, I hustle with everybody. And we got on the floor and I felt like I was back in Brooklyn. So I understand what everyone, when you talk about it, Tilly, about dancing with him and you and Kathy dancing, I just felt that evening, I told Kathy, I, she said, I've never seen you on the floor dance. And I said, cause I've never been able to hustle with anybody. So I want to say, James, you will definitely be missed. May you rest in peace and love. Asheo, Asheo, Asheo. Uh, Good night, so everybody. Thank, thank you so you, much, Tiari. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Maisha, do you want to share anything? Maisha? Um, Maybe she can't hear you. Oh, she hit. She's good. Yeah. She, she... Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm listening to all the um, wonderful things that are said about James. I didn't know, <clears throat> know him as well as some of you did, but. I could just see, you know, everything that you all said about how kind he was, his personality. He always had something nice to say, um, his smile. And um, single, I remember you saying something, I think, at the uh, service about the bathroom. <laughs> he would also come back here sometimes. Can I use the bathroom? <laughs> and uh, I said, sure. You know, he just... He was just, just a, a good man. He's a wonderful person. Um, and I know he would be missed. I miss him, even though I don't see him much. But when I saw him, it was, you know, always a pleasant, always a pleasant experience. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear. Yeah, I, I, you know, you brought back, you know, I think about us traveling on the road. Uh, me, him, Zama, you know, different. it's just so many positive thoughts come to mind, you know, of, of interacting with James. James would take, we go to Philadelphia with James. James, would, you know, we had a lot of business to do in Philadelphia. James would take us all over the place, show us different places, take us places, show us where we could buy fruits and vegetables. And James was just like that. And, and he had a memory bank that was incredible. I mean, you know, incredible i mean he, he'd be away from places for a long time and if he was back in that area he would remember certain things that were going on in that those areas also james used to help us a lot with my brother renoko rashidi whenever he would come to town james was the type of brother that you know when you had some things that you really needed done like you know greeting people at my door for parties james would be more than willing to do it and he would do it i mean do it to the max and make sure, I mean, he'd do it better almost than you could probably do it. Cause he was like, he was just like that with people. So I'm gonna move to another person uh, real quickly. Uh, uh, PG, you got a lot of time. You, you are right or you, or you wanna express right now? Continue brother, I'm fine. Okay, so let me see if there's anyone else that wants to express uh, uh, Maxine Williams. That's me, Jimmy Hyman. Oh, that's <laughs> right. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I got, I, got, I, got, I got you, Jimmy. I just I just keep seeing that vaccine. Okay. Uh uh, let me see. I believe I got oh, wait a minute. Julian, I know, I know you may not have known James for a long time, but do you want to share anything? Yes, indeed. And thank you. I just came on to pay my respects and to give the perception that this was somebody to be deeply respected and honored for his contribution. You could just tell 
by the things people were saying that he was someone very unique and someone who had been a critical integral part of the organization. So I just wanted to come and be in the energy and um, and say Godspeed. Yeah, you know, while you while you on though, let me just say James is also a UNIA member who supported uh, the uh, Moses Cemetery work that's going on. And uh, I, I just wanted to share that too, because, you know, Sometimes you call on a lot of people, a lot of people don't show up, but it's the quality people that show up. James is one of those types that he would show up for, for events. Uh, and, and he was very supportive of our work with, 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 with Moses Cemetery. And uh, I, I don't spend a lot, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about that, but that's some very important work because it's ancestral work. Now, now that James has, is rising, he will help work his mojo with our ancestors. And many of us that are on this call. So, uh, if if you want to share any a little more, uh, so people little have a little more clear picture on who you are, uh, a little bit about the cemetery. Thank work. you. The Moses Cemetery is a site in Bethesda, Maryland, that has held the bodies of former slaves and former black residents of that area. And the history goes back hundreds of years where little girls were violated and thrown into a mass grave. And then later on that area was used to bury people with respect. And developers have sold that land and it has now been excavated, desecrated. And the bodies have been some of them were reburied, but most of them were taken along with tombstones and other important objects and steamrolled and thrown into a um, uh, area where they can't, we can't find the DNA. So the Bethesda African Cemetery Coalition has um, sued the uh, people who have bought it and who are now desecrating it and we're going to go to court on October the 6th. And we ask everybody to come out. And if you can't come out, pray. Um, we're going to uh, watch them argue an appeal of a decision, which basically said that once it's a cemetery, it's always a cemetery. And so we ask for your support on that. And thank you so much. Right, thank you. I, I, I just wanted you to uh, share that because I think that's very important because we revere our ancestors and just like we revere ourselves, mm -hmm. our family, our children. And I thought that was very important. Uh, so we're gonna move now to our President General, President General of the UNIA ACL Rehabilitating Committee 2020. My brother from another mother, brother Akili Malik, I say, I am honored to be a part of this tribute to Brother James. Y'all speak of him, most of you, as the talker. I met him, I think it was actually before 2008, but our interaction truly began in 2008 as I was first assistant president general to single Baye in his president generalship. I saw James as the quiet warrior who spoke softly, elongated, extended <laughs> his point, but yet he was amenable to different views, but stay true to his point. I don't know that we ever changed his mind about anything. <laughs> My closest memories of him are his support for the UNIA ACLRC 2020. But in coming to DC at different times and interacting with him on different levels, his stewardship was evident. Baba Moses said he was one who was documented and got to have the T's crossed and the I's dotted 
and no, it can't be electronic. That was true. Many of the sisters have spoke of him, talked about his helpfulness and his consistency in being present and helping them as they moved in their life. And that was also true. For he extended that same support to me, to Senghor, to 330, to the UNIA ACL, and to the UNIA ACL RC 2020. Because as we made the change, realizing the need was necessary, Brother James walked with us. I won't miss him because I'm not letting him go. I believe ancestors rise. And I believe when you rise as an ancestor, your life continues. I believe life to life. So that I know that in that ancestral realm, I'm going to hear Brother James saying, nope, Baba, nope, 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 uh -huh. nope, no. Let me tell you, let me tell you what I think. You, you might not agree with me, but let me tell you what I think. He would travel to Philadelphia with both Zama and Singor uh, for Renoka Rashidi programs. Always, always present. He would travel with Singor and Brother Zama to Philadelphia for any UNIA activity, regardless of what it was. When RC 2020 was birthed, he stepped right to the plate to be a part of it because he too said the other entity was moving in the wrong direction and he was going to be a part of that which was moving to do the work. He was about the work of rehabilitating, not the UNIA, but raising the race to the proper level. He was a brother a friend, a confidant. I listened to the sister's conversation. And for the sister to say she only do the New York hustle, <laughs> if ever we run into each other, I got you. I got your New York hustle. This is Philadelphia. We like to always challenge New York. Brother James was that entity that weaved us all together. He was that spirit that will forever bind us in family, in unity, in organizational structure. I will miss seeing his face, but I will never forget it. And therefore that memory will always be a part of what I have to deal with and what I will look forward to. Because if I make a wrong step before I hear from Singor, I will hear from him. Mm. I, listen, I understand the roles. He was not just positive and powerful. He was influential. He was real brother. There aren't many of us in the world today, but those of us that are, have to raise the next generation. Yeah. James was raising the next generation so that we can change the dichotomy in this climate that we live in today. He will be missed physically, but he will be loved internally. And as President General of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Community Leaves, RC 2020, we will make sure that we memorialize Brother James. Thank you, Brother Singor. Thank yeah. you, Baba Mosey, and thank to all of you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you PG. And uh, you, you brought back something real quick that I'll share real quickly. You know, I taught the course, both Baba Akili and I were taught the course of African philosophy by the right, excellent, honorable Thomas W. Harvey, who took it from Garvey. Honorable Charles L. James, who took it from Garvey. James happened to be one of my students. And I think about my second trainings. Uh, yeah, yeah, my second trainings, because the first training is only a few people. I had a lot of people in my second class, Baba Akili. James stood out in the class. This is why James stood out in the class. 
James would not only come on the calls where we were doing the, the, the readings and the studies and the reasoning, James would come to my house after the phone call, not right after, but at some point after the call, the lesson, and we would go back into the lesson because James was that serious about the works, words, and deeds taught in that course. I actually loaned him my first book, Achille, and you know that, that book is falling all apart. I loaned it to him until, before, until he could get his own book and he kept it for a while. He brought back that book to me. He said to me, he was like, Senghor, Senghor, I could have took the course by just getting the book from you because you underscored all over this book. <laughs> I said, yeah, James, that's what we do. He said, I hope you don't mind. I did some additional underscoring. <laughs> I said, no, I don't mind, James. But anyway, that's how James was. And, and he, would, he would question me point for point. Because one of the things most people, and, 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 and I know some people on it may not know exactly what I'm talking about, but Marcus Garvey wrote this course in 1938 to help put us back on course. That's what we are doing, striving to get back on course with the original uh, uh, goals and objectives. But it's important to note that uh, James was that serious. When he brought back my book and said he had his own, uh, he was like, you know, single, you know, all these people went through the course, but you know, from what I see, you don't never stop learning. That's one of the most important things about this course is it does not teach you all of the steps that you take. It brings out your own vision, your own consciousness. So you add to it. And that's what both Baba Akili and I are very clear on that because we were taught by the hardliners that learn from Garvey and they were serious about it. In some cases you had to write the course out, you had to write chapters out. We're not that hard line. <laughs> of course we got the internet, we got other kind of ways. Well, not only that single, but we didn't have a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, that, that's right. Because we started taking the course before the book was, before the book was done. I took that's the right. course from Thomas W. Harvey. There was that's no book. Paper. That's right, they had paper, you're right. Exactly, you know, because the book was not done until 1983. But 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 it's not just reading the book it's how you comprehend what's in the book and james was very serious about point for point and whether or not he understood it clearly or not or agreed he would make sure that i explained to him the best way i could from how i related to it and you love that about students y'all know what i'm saying but at any rate i'm gonna stop right there because we could every time somebody says something it brings up some more energy that just goes to show you how powerful our brother's existence was here with us and it's going to be that much more powerful Tendai, mama Tendai, i'm a well i'm a first let me see mama margaret uh from adasi wants to share anything uh because james is very supportive of adasi by the way uh, and then i'm gonna come to you mama Tendai. uh mama margaret She's muted. Mama Margaret, do you want to share anything? Mama Margaret is like Mama Jeanette. I know, I know. <laughs> I know. Mama Margaret, do you want to share anything? Margaret, well, unmute mute yourself. Okay, we're going to come back to her. Mama Tendai, you know, you represent, you, you not only a UNIA, a DASI, appeal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You, you've known uh, br our brother for a while. Uh, you, you you got to hear him in the UNIA. So, and I know you did the uh, ritual, but is it anything you want to share? I just wanted to add that a, he was, how can I put it? He was dependable. You know, when we're talking about you could count on him, he was dependable. If he said he was going to be there, he was going to be there. And one of the things that, um, I continue to appreciate him is he supported Adasi. He, whenever we had the river walk, Brother James was there. You know, we Adasi knew Zama and Senghor. I also knew Brother James. And when I knew if those brothers were gonna be there, he was gonna be there to support. And he never said anything, he just pick up and start helping. So he was a brother who was giving and who was, and so we on this plane of consciousness who remain here, need to continue to give to him. And so part of what we were doing in terms of the ascension, 
is giving energy to him to help him in his ascension process. Absolutely. I specifically put this little green plant over here as a reminder to you all that he lives and that life is everlasting. It was pr promised to us. A world without end, life everlasting. Okay. Okay. Can you hear Yes, Margaret. Okay, I just found out how to unmute myself. I really didn't know him, but I am getting to know him listening to you all. I mean, I, I've seen him when I saw a picture of him. I remember seeing him, but I really did not know him. But he was, a re I do remember seeing him at our Darcy programs. But uh, as knowing him as a, a, a friend or a person, I didn't really know him. Okay. All right. That's, that's quite all but right. I'm learning, but I'm learning who he is from you all. Right. Mom, well, we wanted to make sure we got you, you know, you wanted to share anything. So that's why, you know, Mama Tendai was looking out for you, sister. I did not yeah. know the number. I didn't recognize your number, but she did. And so we got you in now, Mama Margaret. Oh, okay. We appreciate, we appreciate you as a, as a very loyal, active UNIA member as well, but also one who's helped with Cockeron for many years and handled the books. So, you know, you, you, you're the treasurer for Adasi and, and you're a great one. And so you understand what that treasury work is about. And that's what James held down with the division. And he also held a lot of your opinions. You know, you, you always tell us, Mama Margaret, is that all y'all asking for? That's what James used to say too. He's always <laughs> saying, is that all y'all want? I mean, you know, you gotta get more than that. So I mean, I'm just saying, so you y'all had a lot of uh, uh, similarities. I so, wish I had known him though, but from listening to you all, I, to everything that everybody has said very positive about him, I wish I had known him just to see him, but I mean, I rich, you know, it's spoken to him and talked well, you, to him, but I had never done that. But you know how it goes, Mama Margaret. You can still get a picture and put on your altar and you can talk to James and <laughs> he'll talk back. I, I guarantee James not going to be one of those silent ancestors. He's going to be at our door. <laughs> He's going to be mm -hmm. at our door. In fact, the other day, somebody knocked on the door and didn't did I didn't know who it was and that's the first person I thought of is that James and I mean mm. you know, James had already left us on this level but that's just how powerful his energy is Baba Haru I don't know whether you knew this you're a chef yourself you're organic uh, a, a, a vegan chef but you, James could cook up a storm and, and he could prepare some good vegan foods too so I know what you want to share anything Haru no is that he was the ultimate quester always on the journey of sharing and is also also the ultimate networker. So he was like a wanderer with a mission that was structured. That's right. So he was, he was always a servant to others. So right. and the, he, he, he made them sure that the connections he made where it was everlasting and never, never dis dissipate over time. Did you know that, did you know he could really cook up some food? I mean, he could prepare some food and cook up some food. Did you know that? I didn't know that at all, so. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and you, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are excellent vegan chef. Yes. And so, you, you know, many of the parties that you were here at, you know, James used to come tell me, man, you better get some of Haru's food, man, before it's gone. Because <laughs> everybody else is rushing to the cook food, <laughs> you know, but then when they get over to your food and when they taste it, they like, oh my goodness, I should have been over here first. <laughs> <laughs> but James wasn't playing. He go to the vegan food first, and then come over to the cook food. I, I, like me, I like to try to get a little bit of everything. But anyway, I wanted to not leave you out because you, even though you're our technical uh, 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 host, I didn't want to leave you out. And Zama, is, is there anything you want to say, Zama, or share? Zama, I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, okay. Close this out. Oh, take your time, man. Take your time. Y'all get ready. <laughs> While we're waiting on Brother Zama, I just want to mention the brother, uh, Dr. Brother Haru, when he said it, since he's technical service services, that basically that's J James's position. He was internet before internet. <laughs> Connecting so worldwide, right? <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point, dear. That's a good point you raise. And we got to get more back to that, even though we got this technology. We get nothing like seeing one another. My brother Zama. Zama. Yeah, yeah. Uh I don't know where to start. Uh James called me a week before he transitioned to come use the bathroom. It was about 11 o'clock at night. I know, I know that. Okay. <laughs> 
James, James was a good brother. He talked with you. Uh, he wanted you to meet everybody that he knew. Okay. Uh, uh, a lot of things that y'all said about him, I know about it uh, firsthand. I think that James fought, even though he had the computer, he fought the technology. Took him a long time to get into it, you know. Uh, I think probably around January this year, he started to sort of like change his thing a little bit. But uh, <laughs> he used to roll up and down the road with us all the time. Uh, in particular when Renoko was involved. Uh, good brother, had a good heart, you know. Uh, he stopped by, just like St. Cor says, out of the blue, you know, Eric Gardison, he demanded your time to listen to what he had to say, you know. Uh, I think I've known James close to 40 years, you know. Met him through uh, St. Cor Farouk, you know. He'll be missed. You know. Big time, big time. And you know, Zama, how we used to roll with roll on the road, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. J James, James was the type brother that you love to travel with because he would he would keep you in so much conversation. You look up, you at your destination. Yeah. yeah. That's how that's how James was, y'all. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, and 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 he's he was like a life of a party too. You know, if, if you go to a party with James and, and people ain't jamming. He's gonna make sure something happen. That's why he's the life of the party, y'all. Uh yeah. so so Zama, is, is that it? Are you had you finished? Yeah, I'm 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 done, bro. I just got off the other thing, but yeah, I'm done. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, I, the, I, I, I'd like to add. Sure, Baba. You know, um I, I, after hearing what people are saying about <laughs> his networking and all that, I can understand why he would he would tell me that, you know, we're going to sit down and we're going to put this thing together, uh, th this network together, so that all those people who are behind in dudes, who are behind in dudes, or who need to be members of the UNI, we're going to work this out. The, plan was, start, the plan was to start this, this, uh, this season, they were actually in September. Uh, we never got down to it, so I don't even know what he had in mind. Except, of course, that uh, you know uh, those those folks who have uh, you know they were members, but they have not renewed their membership yet. That he was going to do some some phone work. I yeah, guess not, it would be not, phone. Not I don't know if he's going to knock on their doors. Maybe yeah, he was going to knock on their doors. <laughs> Baba, James told me point blank. He said, I'm going to, I will go see them. I said, serious business when it, he's about yeah. to be. So, so, you know, he had a plan for us to get going on making sure that uh, we, um, we, we, we got our finances in order. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to miss whatever it was that he, he was going to bring forward because he's, he sounded just like, you know, you guys saying you knock at your door. And I'm, I'm, I'm in retrospect, I'm thinking maybe he was going to go knock on folks doors because I mean, and he was serious, you know, he was That's kind of like, down. like, like the, like back in the day when the insurance man used to come to your house <laughs> to, to get the oh, insurance yeah. payment. <laughs> that that's what he was talking about you yeah. see i know we live in this modern technology but james was saying you know like personal contact generally makes people pay <laughs> yeah. you know zama zama made a good point there you know james with the technology uh he was challenged like you know i'm challenged you know a lot of us are challenged with technology james is really challenged with the technology and he's very serious about it but when he got it down uh, you know, the Freedom Fridays that we would have, James, James, whether or not he was on the phone or on the Zoom, he would have input always. And even in meetings, you know, James. So so, so you right, though, Baba Akili, he was one of those silent warriors, but James had a gift of gab. He could really, really tell you some things. I mean, and, and you know, you know how I talk. James could really tell you some stories. Trust me. And a lot of times the stories would, would, would pan out because he would actually introduce. When we went to South Carolina <coughs> to uh, Noah's Ark, Medisage, 
James was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get some people here. James brought a whole crew of people from the West Coast. Yes, that's right, my sister. <laughs> James brought a whole crew of people from the West Coast. And by, that's why Swami said he really wanted to be on because Swami, you know, you know, got, got real close with James too, because James understood what the concept of Medisage was. But James went all the way back to the beginning of Stop America from Eating the Young in 1975 that, that I was involved with. So he understood the evolution of coming from there of where Swami is at now with Medisage, which was turned, the nonprofit was turned from safety, where we went from Stop America from Eating the Young to Sound Action for Enlightening the Young, but now it's Medisage, which means healing wisdom. And James used to talk to us about retreats all across this country. People that had land, all kinds of different things that were going on. So, so anyway, Swami, he couldn't be here with us, but uh, I just wanted to throw that in because Swami wanted to make sure I let everybody know that he was very saddened when he heard about uh, the transition as well. So if anybody has anything burning that they want to share, uh, now is the time to do it. Let's, let's, let's not forget about James's love and dedication to his mother. Oh yeah, we can't forget that. No yeah. question. Not only, well, not only, <laughs> well, that still, that still continues uh, in terms of how James was able to vibe with Kathy and James got together because a lot of our elders in the DC area, we, I wanna go back to this. In the DC area, elders are pretty blessed with a lot of programming programs because we're not a state we, we still are our taxation without representation but we do have a lot of senior programs so even though you have a lot of people that care for elders a lot of people are not able to be paid that's what we set up uh dealing with a, a, a system where you can be paid tax-free and you don't pay no taxes on it where you can be paid to care for your elders and if you have an elder in your household you can be paid inside your household to care for your elders. That's something that happens in DC and not in Maryland, not in Virginia, not that I know of. I mean, of course you gotta pay people it's to put your pocket, but there are programs that you can get. And that's why I was saying, Kathy is actually still the supervisor of the care providers for Mama Gladys. And Mama Gladys, I was one at one time and, and Mama Gladys is definitely uh, someone we want to hold in the light and prayer. She still can bend over and touch her toes. Y'all hear me? She still can. Two years old. Yeah, 102, still can bend over and touch her toes. And Brother Jimmy was talking about his mom, who's 104. Mama Tendai, his mother, before she went before us, how old was she, Mama Tendai? 110. Mama Tendai? She's on me. She's 110. 110. Yeah, so, so I just said that to everybody because a lot of times when we can keep our elders close to us and don't have to put them away somewhere and can deal with them, I've seen that myself with, 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 with uh, Dr. Sylvia Hill's husband, James, who I cared for, who was blind. I was a provider for him. Of course, I wasn't in a system. Uh, Mama, uh, uh, Dr. Hill used to pay me directly. I cared for uh, uh, Aunt Lula, who stayed with us for about seven years before she transitioned. And we bought her from Ohio because it wasn't working there. Uh, people were hustling her. She was, they, were, they were writing her off. They, they didn't give her much time to live. So we bought her here and we got her in the program and the system. I was able to spend a lot of like, nice time with her. So I just say that to everybody because everybody has elders in their family. Everybody, a lot of us are elders. <laughs> uh, it is important for us to be able to care for our elders. And James did a wonderful job with caring for his moms to the extent that even though he's no longer here physically, he put things in place where she would have the best of care providers. Uh, you know, right now we're, we're hoping that brothers, or his, his brother can step up. Uh, we're working with him to get him through the system. Uh, Sherry and uh, what's my other sister's name, Zama? Uh, uh. Anyway, she, it's another From sister. Dominican Republic. Uh, so anyway, we got care providers taking care of Mama Coralie. Uh, Damiana. Damiana, right. Damiana. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Tilly. So we're still working on that. 
and 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 not a day goes by where we don't I I I can't you know James is have to come by here get the paperwork signed and you know because even though they're now electronic they weren't when I was there you had to do this paperwork manually and you have to get it signed by your supervisor so aside from James coming by to do business with me he would come by to take care of business with us so I got to see him a lot more often than what I would normally see him because he would come by to bring paperwork to get paperwork signed. And that was great. That was really great. Uh, but at any rate, I'm, the, the, the floor is open now. If anybody got anything they want to share. I, I have to go, can you hear me? Yes, go yeah. ahead. Uh, you know, James, he took Miss Gladys, Gladys down there one time. They was had some discrepancy. He brought him down there personally and yes. showed her. And he said, here she is right here at 102. <laughs> and then I, I look back on that. Thing about uh, Irish's mom, you know, she was uh, so strong. And then, my, 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 like she would say, that they're under the veil right now. That's the term he would use. And then, and then my mother lived to be 104. She passed last year, but he was, we was, she was on the smoker's jar, but it was so thing about they kept saying when it was coming on. He called me when we said, Hi, I'm hi. She's on right now. Mama Williams is on the, with Al Roker right now. You know, like it was three hours different because I live in LA. And it was such a joy that um, when I still have all that on, on the phone tape recorded, I got recorded that I, I, I've kept on about a year. I just uh, didn't re erase them. For some reason, I just wouldn't erase them. And they still, and I still hear his voice. Yeah. 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 When she was playing that that saxophone, her, her, her and, and Charlie Parker both bought the saxophone at the same time in Kansas City High School. You know, she was, she played that saxophone. I mean, she was amazing, amazing lady. Yes, she is. And, you know, I, I went to a, and this wasn't that long ago, y'all. I, I went to a block party uh, that was done down on 9th Street. And I looked up and who did I see but James Wilson and Mama Corley. Just roll right up. I mean, I'm just saying right to the block party. I mean, I, I, I like James. I mean, it was nice out. So it was a good day to be out. But it, it's, just, it's just that he kept, the, and I know for a fact that that is important to our elders. Yes. Yeah have activities for them so that they're not always stuck up in the house, you know, uh, you know, and Mama Corley could eat y'all. I'm telling you, yeah. I, James would make sure that the, the best of food came to Mama Corley. Uh, we got a lot of programs here in DC where they bring food, you know, by James would also prepare stuff. And, you know, I, I was a care provider and I used to feed her. So I know for a fact, Mama Corley used to clean her plate. Very seldom did she leave anything on her plate, <laughs> and I, and Mama Corley is 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 is, is a joyful kind of kind of uh, person to be around too, and I know she misses James tremendously. I know that, uh, and uh, so y'all keep her in prayer, uh, and uh, just keep the family in prayer. Uh, a lot goes on when people transition. I'm not gonna get into all the particulars. Yes, I know. A lot of stuff goes on and happens, uh, but we as a UNIA. We understand the family is first, regardless to whether the family is together, not together, broken up or whatever. When someone transitions, we allow the family to do what they gotta do. And then we do what we need to do. We don't step in. That's just the way the UNIA rolls. Uh, but it's real, 40 day rights is extremely important because this is where we gotta let James go. We can't hold James physically. Yes. We gotta hold him spiritually as our spiritual brother forever throughout eternity but we cannot hold on to him physically. We have to let him go. And Mama Tendai, if you want to speak to that a little better than what I'm saying, because sometimes we, we are so in love with people, we hold on to them physically and that could kind of create problems for their ascension. Could you talk a little bit about that, Mama Tendai? That's basically why we do the 40 day celebration. It satisfies us here on earth for us to know that, okay, it's time to stop calling, stop, doing whatever it takes you know we're going to mourn in the way that we do but we have to let go of the physical presence of the person to allow the spirit to take over and for him to learn how to be a spirit that's not caught in a physical body so the ascension is to let him go so he can learn how to become an ancestor because yeah. he has to now learn how to become a spirit it's like us like a baby trying to learn how to walk you know when, you, when they come into the world, learning how to walk, learning how to talk. It's the same thing when we make our <clears throat> We have to learn how to become a spirit. And so uh, when we let go on the 40th day to allow the spirit to be able to begin its ascension process, 
in terms of becoming an entire spirit. We usually celebrate a year later because we say it takes an entire year for them to make a full transition. Uh, and after that one year is when we then can call upon them for their services as a spiritual entity that is no longer well, by, as a human. So by no means are we talking about letting go to the, the fond memories. We no. talk we like Jonathan very, down very well because in the UNIA, we will continue to do memorials not only James, but for many who have gone before us, memorials are very important. We must remember because every time you call their name, now after this 40 days, every time you call their name, they'll show up. Right. Okay. So we want to continue after this praying for his continued ascension. Right. So we call on him, we're going to pray that he's moving on. Right, right, Mama. Thank Assume you. his right position right. Among, the, uh, among the other elders, among the spirits, who continue to support us even when we forget to call on them. Like, remember what Marcus Garvey told us. He said, count on me in death to be the real Marcus Garvey. I say. Be with you forever, as Ashe. long as it takes. He said, no matter how long it takes, we will succeed. And that ancestral energy is so, so important, y'all. So, but I hear you, Mama Tendai. That is important what you just shared. We got to continue to pray for, for, for wellness of the family, pray Ashe. for Name's wellness so that he can ascend properly and can, can, can take his rightful place with his wings with Marcus Garvey, with all those who went before us. Uh, don't, so, don't forget what I said now. He's already in the process of doing that because his request through uh, our people in Nigeria was, fix this stuff for me. Now you all, he, he's continuing even as a spirit to do what he was doing here on this earth. He wanted us to fix this stuff for him so that he could have his party, his welcoming, he was so that he could be received properly yes. in the realm of the ancestors. And so that they would be, you know, he's in the process of partying. He's saying, give this to my team who is helping me to move on and who is in the ancestral realm yes. waiting to welcome me. And, yes. and that's because he has risen. Yes. yes. And that's why it's important he has risen. with our altars to, to make sure that we, 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 we hold those things in, 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 in the light. Uh, yes, that's very important. Thanks, Tendai. Uh, yeah, I, put a, I even put a drum there so that uh, symbolically we could hear the drum to beat the way so they can, the ancestors can hear him coming. Okay. Okay. So anybody else want to share anything at this point? Just feel free just to, you know, Jimmy? I'm, I'm going to step off my brother. Yeah, we all going to be leaving shortly too, PG. Thank you so much for taking time out. No, here. no, thank you for that. Yeah. My brother, I honored my brother. I honored him. Right. Uh, was that Jimmy? Who was that? Somebody said something. That Go was... I have the slideshow. Oh, 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 you do? Okay. Uh, you can bring that up now.
Uh, these pictures are from Mama Corley's 102 birthday. There's James with the flag. Okay. Wow, that was nice. That yeah. was nice. That was Mama Corley's 102 birthday and other pictures. Very, very nice. Uh, anybody, anybody, uh, anybody have anything they want to share at this point before we uh, close this out? We're not going to leave. We're just going to move into something else as we as as we continue to uh, elevate and continue to work that we all got to do. Uh, and I just want to, oh, Saturday, I think, uh, let me remind everybody one more time, the Thurgood Marshall Center is this Saturday at 2 p.m. And uh, the Thurgood Marshall Center, for those who do not know, is located at 1816 12th Street, Northwest Washington, DC. Starts at 2 p.m. I suggest you get there before 1.30, uh, parking. Sometimes the parking lot is okay on Saturday. Sometimes you might have to park on the street. But uh, thanks to Tony Browder and Sister Sherry, uh, they're going to carry on with the upliftment process. And in person is certainly to be uplifting. And I'm so glad that our dear brother and sister are gonna be able to make it here from the West Coast. Uh, I know people who are coming down from Philly. I know that, I know from Baltimore and DC, but to have the West Coast energy here is gonna be a blessing. So I'm sure uh, brother Zama, Mama Tilly, Baba Mosi, who will be here and other UNIA members who will be here will be certainly glad to meet and greet you all and welcome you all into Banneker City. And I'm gonna be an uplifting uh, continuation of a 40 day rites of passage. Nobody else got anything to share? Any questions? No other comments? Everybody okay? Can you hear me? Yes, Jimmy. I'd like to say one more thing in the Ethiopian dialect. Tenzio Lesila, Egyo Talashalane. Salam, make it like move, mess and peace, because Lord have mercy upon us, forgive us for all our sin. Peace be unto us all and with thy spirit. In them hard version. Give thanks, Jimmy. Give thanks. Uh, you know, our brother, let me ask you something, Jimmy, before we close out. The, a brother from the Watts Poets. Yeah, I just talked to Father D now. He's in, in the Mayo Clinic getting some checkup. I, I just talked to him. I emailed him. My ratio had given me his... Um, uh, uh, the, the, the link, but he's there, but he wanted to just say more so that James and um, they were so, the tours and all the guidance that they gave him and the Watts Prophets and all, cause Otis Solomon's gone and um, Richard Dito's gone, but he's left. And uh, he just wanted to know how thankful and to give his prayer. I just talked to him, um, but he, he he's at, at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. Uh, well, James, was, James brought him to us uh, on Zoom. Yes. An event we had on a Freedom Friday, uh, and and it was powerful. Uh, and you can still see that too, if you go to the uh, uh, Black Learning Channel uh, on YouTube, you can actually view that uh, particular Freedom Friday and all the others, because uh, I believe that's there. So I want to thank you, Jimmy. Yes. And, and you know, for for and Aracia, thank you so much. Uh, like I will be with you here this weekend for sure. Uh, you all, I, in fact, I'll be in North Carolina uh, doing a uh, memorial service for uh, Kathy's brother-in-law who transitioned some time ago and we're going down there for the family and we're gonna take his ashes there. Uh, some are going to Africa and some are going there uh, with some of the family members down in North Carolina. And that, so a lot of us will be going down to join to deal with that. So that's why we won't be here. Otherwise, I would be here. 
So with that said, I'm going to turn to uh, probably Baba Mosi for closing words. Yes, again. Thank you, Baba Sangor, for uh, conducting this 40th right program we had here this evening. I want to thank everyone for attending and for all the remarks you've made, those, those positive remarks that remind us of this loving brother that we had and who we will not only keep in the light, but we we'll remember him in the spirit so that when we conduct business, those of us who are members of the UNIA, ACL, RC2020, Division 330, when we have our meetings, uh, we shall have the spirit with us because we know many times when we would have some discussions and we seem to be going nowhere, out of the blue and we think, you know, Brother James was not on because we may see a, a phone number, we don't know whose it is. And Brother James would cut in and say, y'all need to blah, 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 blah. And they always something like that and he would come in. Uh, in other words, it was like, you know, let's move on from here. You know, it's you're too long on this subject matter. Let's close it and we hopefully will have his spirit with us with our meetings as we go on in the future. So again, I must thank you all. It's been a pleasure. It's been my privilege to be president working with Brother James. I shall always remember him. I shall always remember him as he made his instructions as to how things are going to be done if he's going to be the treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> Mosi. Yeah, that was really good of him. Baba um, so, Baba Mosi, please. Baba Mosi, Baba Hold Mosi. On. Yeah, I want to. I want to bring Reverend Julie, Julian in to to close us with prayer. Uh, oh. uh, you know, and uh, but but you go ahead if you had go ahead and finish. But I wanted. Yeah, just... Well, I'm finishing by saying I'm I'm thanking everyone and in 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 and so to make it short, uh, you know, uh, it was it was it was nice to have you on and. Uh, Please uh, be safe. Okay, Reverend Julian. Okay. So in this moment of completion, in this time of reverence, this circle of loving observance, we call in Olodumare, we call in Mother Yemaya, we call in Obatala, Eshu, Oba, Oya, Igun, we call in all of our ancestors and our teams of spiritual protection and provision as we say goodbye, but never goodbye. We say we love you and we will always love you. We take this time to open the space and yet close the circle. Okay. This is our prayer in the name of all that is sacred, all that is holy, all that is pure. Ashe, Aho, Amin, and Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. God Thank you all. Love you. In your own way, everyone take a moment as we depart to say a prayer, silent prayer for Brother James and his ascension, I say. Yes, indeed. Rest in power. Rest in power, I say. So long. Okay, Julie, 6 a.m. Yes, thank you, you too. <laughs> Do play, sister. <laughs> <laughs>